and I went down and I opened my eyes and I saw like right in front of me this huge eyeball, like about the size of a, of a saucer. A hundred new species discovered off the coast of Chile, a new form of oxygen production in the deep sea that may put a halt to deep sea mining, and could small deep sea creatures help us understand neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's? These are some of the most incredible deep sea discoveries made in 2024 so far. Early in 2024, an amazing deep sea expedition uncovered possibly over 100 new species off the coast of Chile. Between January 8th and February 11th, researchers aboard the Schmidt Ocean Institute's research vessel Falkor 2 explored the sea floor. The expedition, called Seamounts of the Southeast Pacific, focused on underwater mountains or seamounts in three main areas. The Nazca and Salas y Gomez ridges, which stretch 1,800 miles from Chile to East Eastern Island, and the Juan Fernandez and Nazca Desventura Addis Marine Parks. During the expedition, the team mapped the ocean floor and discovered four previously unknown seamounts. The largest was 11,581 feet, or 3,530 meters above the seafloor. And just to put that into perspective, that's more than four times the height of the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. And as I said before, they also discovered more than 100 previously undiscovered species. There were all sorts of corals, sponges, sea urchins, mollusks, and crustaceans. Lead scientist Javier Salanaz, a marine biologist, said, We far exceeded our hopes on this expedition. The amount we found, especially for some groups like sponges, is mind-blowing. What you're looking at here is a comb jelly. As alien as it looks though, it may actually be able to give us some insight into the human brain. A recent study funded by the US National Science Foundation has uncovered how ocean creatures, specifically comb jellies, have adapted to survive in radically different environments, i.e. shallow waters versus the extreme depths of the ocean. The research revealed that deep sea and shallow water comb jellies have different types of lipid molecules in their cell membranes. These lipids help the creature's cells stay stable in their environments. For deep sea comb jellies, the high pressure of the ocean floor keeps their cell membranes intact, but if brought to the surface, the lack of pressure causes their membranes to break down and the jellyfish basically turn into goo. On the flip side, Shallow water comb jellies have membranes that are too rigid to function properly under the extreme pressures of the deep sea. So what does this mean for us? Well, the deep sea comb jellies membranes are made up of plasmalogens, a type of lipid which is also found in the human brain. In humans, a loss of plasmalogens has been linked to diseases like Alzheimer's. So the researchers are hoping that with more research, they'll be able to better understand these lipids role in our brains and by extending how diseases of the brain develop. Deep sea mining was really called into question this past summer. Researchers found that oxygen is being produced deep in the ocean from small metallic nodules on the sea floor. This is a pretty amazing find because before we thought that oxygen was only produced through photosynthesis, which relies on sunlight, of course. Professor Andrew Sweetman, who led the study, said for aerobic life to begin on the planet, there had to be oxygen. But we now know that there is oxygen produced in the deep sea, where there is no light. The discovery came while the team was studying the potential effects of deep sea mining in the Clarion Clipperton zone between Hawaii and Mexico. The nodules they sampled had an electric charge high enough to split seawater into hydrogen and oxygen, which Sweetman described as, quote, effectively batteries in a rock. So obviously this finding makes deep sea mining more controversial than it already is. On one hand, some think mining the ocean floor is really important for gathering minerals that are needed for a transition into more green energy, but a lot of oceanographers are worried that we just don't fully understand the impact this could have on deep sea ecosystems. And that's becoming even more apparent with this recent find. Also in 2024, six new species of carnivorous sea sponges were discovered. Marine biologists using an ROV, remotely operated vehicle, found the six new species off the coast of Western Australia. The sponges belong to the Cladio The sponges belong to the Cladohorizon the fing Cladio or something family. <laughs> 
the, <laughs> just put it up on screen, Vincent. I can't pronounce it. The sponges belong to this family here that I'm not gonna bother trying to pronounce. And this discovery puts the total number of this family in Australia at 41. I cannot pronounce the names of these things individually either, but we can show you some of them. There's this one, then you got this one here, and you can't forget about this guy. They were found in two deep sea locations, the Bremer Canyon system, where one of the new species was discovered, and Cape Range Canyon, where the other five were found. Dr. Jim Thompson, CEO of Queensland Museum said, these new to science species enhance our knowledge of this family and highlight the importance of ongoing exploration and conservation of marine biodiversity. Now, what used to happen is scientists would collect carnivorous sponges by trawling the ocean floor, but because of advancements in ROV technology, now they can just look at these creatures in their natural habitats, all from the comfort of their office desks, which is pretty incredible. <laughs> In March of 2024, a 45-day deep-sea expedition to the clarion Clipperton zone between Mexico and Hawaii uncovered some very bizarre but fascinating creatures, too. Thomas Dahlgren, a marine ecologist from the University of Gothenburg, was part of the team aboard the British research vessel and stated, quote, These areas are the Earth's least explored. It's estimated that only one out of ten animal species living down here has been described by science. The team explored the abyssal plains, deep sea regions at depths of 3,500 to 5,500 meters. Despite covering more than half of the Earth's surface, we really don't know much about the life down there. Dahlgren described the excitement of discovering new species like it was the 18th century all over again. The animals in these extreme depths survive on very little food, mostly organic debris called marine snow falling from the surface, so the population is mostly made up of filter feeders like sponges and sediment feeders like sea cucumbers. The team used an ROV to capture footage and collect samples. Some of their coolest discoveries were bowl-shaped sponges and a pink sea cucumber known as a sea pig. Dahlgren went on to say, these sea cucumbers were some of the largest animals found on this expedition. Expedition. They act as ocean floor vacuum cleaners. The team also photographed a cup-shaped glass sponge thought to live up to 15,000 years. What you're looking at here is an object used to sample water deep in the ocean. It's called the Conductivity Temperature and Depth Rosette, or CTD. It was recently used to study the ocean's twilight zone, a deep, dark region 200 to 1,000 meters below the surface. Scientists found that this area is not only low in light, but also iron deficient, a condition that affects the growth of bacteria. So to survive, these bacteria produce special molecules called siderophores, which help them gather tiny amounts of iron from the surrounding water. The study focused on the Pacific Ocean, setting out to see how these bacteria adjust to the harsh environment. Tim Conway, an associate professor of chemical oceanography, explained, understanding the organisms that facilitate carbon uptake in the ocean is important for understanding the impacts of climate change. When organic matter from the surface ocean descends to the deep ocean, it acts as a biological pump that removes carbon from the atmosphere and stores it in seawater and sediments. The researchers collected water samples during an expedition from Alaska to Tahiti and were surprised by their findings. Not only did they discover high levels of siderophores in surface waters, but they also found them in the twilight zone, an area where iron was expected to have very little impact on the growth of bacteria. Conway went on to say, unlike in surface waters, we did not expect to find siderophores in the ocean's twilight zone. Zone. This discovery is helping them understand the ocean's role in carbon storage. This year, scientists discovered all these ecosystems in the volcanic caves under hydrothermal vents on the seafloor. During a 30-day expedition aboard the Schmidt Ocean Institute's research vessel, Falkor 2, the team explored an undersea volcano along the East Pacific Rise where two tectonic plates meet. The area is known for its hydrothermal vents, which are underwater openings where seawater and hot magma combine to create these natural hot springs. Around these vents, sea life like tube worms, mussels, and bacteria live in the extreme conditions. But what the researchers didn't expect to find 
were large communities living in caves below these vents. Using the remotely operated vehicle Sebastian, they discovered caves filled with giant tube worms, some reaching up to over one and a half feet long along with snails and other animals. Dr. Sabine Kallner, a marine biologist involved in the study, called it, quote, mind-blowing to see animals living beneath the vents. And for years, scientists have studied vent ecosystems, but life below them was mostly a mystery. This year, scientists continued researching the possibility of a hidden ocean deep beneath our feet, and they may have gotten closer than ever to the truth. About 400 miles below the Earth's surface, there is a massive reservoir of water trapped in a rock called Ringwoodite. While scientists knew that water could be stored inside the mantle rocks, they never imagined it could exist in such a mysterious form. Instead of being a solid liquid or gas, the water is held in a sponge-like structure in the rock. Geophysicist Steve Jacobson, who is part of the research team, explained, the ringwoodite is like a sponge soaking up water. There's something very special about the crystal structure of ringwoodite that allows it to attract hydrogen and trap water. The study, titled the Dehydration Melting at the Top of the Lower Mantle, showed that this water could make up a big amount of the Earth's total water supply. Scientists found the hidden water by studying seismic waves from earthquakes, which revealed that the waves were interacting with the water trapped in ringwoodite. And here's something really nuts. If this rock contains just 1% water, it would mean the Earth has three times as much water deep below the surface as all the oceans combined. With all that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Thank you.